Today, we're gonna to talk about masks. No, I mean masks. Put your hands in the air, it's a sticker. No, I mean masks, like weathering masks. So what's a weathering mask, you ask? Well, it's a compound like toothpaste that you put in between paint layers so that you can see the bottom layer through the top layer. Often this is used on props so that they look aged. Oh, and I even have a special guest today when I try to finish something. Okay, so here's the game plan. I'm going to divide up this board into six quadrants. I'm gonna use different masking agents and see what the pros and cons are. So I am quite familiar with using toothpaste for weathering. So I thought it would be interesting to see if there was a difference between the green or the white toothpaste. For the white glues, I chose an all purpose and a washable version. My guess is the washable version will be easier to come off at the end. The washable version was a lot runnier than the all-purpose glue. This Windsor and Newton liquid latex masking comes in at a whopping $15 for this small little bottle. Often I will trim a brush end so that none of the bristles are the same length to allow for a random application and appearance. However, the latex simply refused to play along. So I found a small piece of styrene that worked great for all these smaller latex applications. Now I thought mustard would have been more akin to the toothpaste in its application, but immediately I noticed it went on much thinner than I anticipated. The only fear I have is the mustard may leave a yellow stain afterward. Now, I'm applying the Creature Liquid Latex. It seems to apply just like the Windsor Latex, but at $14 in a much larger container, it seems like a steal of a deal. For the rubber cement, I found the sponge to be the easiest way to apply it. Now here is where I go against all logic. Everything in my brain says, this is cement, hence it will be there for life. I am extremely curious to see how or even if this mask comes up later. Now time for some rust primer, as I'd like to have a dual layer effect. I'm applying the mask the same way as before. For the most part, I'm just adding a larger amount over the previous masked area. The hope is that I will have a rust reveal around the edges of the silver. Occasionally, I add a new mask area just so that it will have an only rust appearance. I'm feeling more confident this second time around with these new products. So if you're jumping into this for the first time, my recommendation is to practice on a scrap board first before diving into something you spent the better part of a week or maybe even a month building. And for a little bit of added curiosity, I'm adding Morton Sea Salt. I have no idea what effect it's going to make, but I'm excited to find out. I do a light spray dusting over the salt to bind it to the board, then paint the whole board this beautiful color blue. Right off the bat, the toothpaste started coming off just like I expected, but then none of the other masking agents were coming off easily. So I use some water on a toothbrush to try to take it off. And it may not show well, but I had put a lot of pressure on the board in the process for over a half hour. This was not going easy. Now my biggest expectation was the joy of peeling back the liquid latex masks. And they did come up fairly easy where the mask was large. I did note that even paint came up where I didn't mask. I think it might be that I added too many layers or the curing process of the mask and or the paint was not perfect. But since I'm going for random damage, it all worked out in the end. The mustard took quite a bit to come up, but I thought it looked good in the end. Now the Creature Liquid Latex, I thought it came up pretty easy. As for the rubber cement, I don't know to be honest. 
I found it to be the most difficult to come up, and while in the end it had some cool aging effects, I think it was more the toothbrush slipping and gouging the paint. So up to this point, I've shown you how I've applied several different weathering masks. Now comes the difficult part. So I was talking to Sean Cash the other day, you know, the paint and weathering genius over on Try to Finish Something. We got to talking. We both wanted to maybe dabble a little bit with an episode about weathering. So I proposed a collaboration. I was going to provide all the weathering and the samples, and then he was going to put his input about it. I don't really know if he's gonna critique my skill, if he's going to determine which agent he thinks goes in which section of the board. We really didn't talk much about it beyond that point. So I'm kind of curious what he's gonna say. I took my sample board and sectioned them by number, toothpaste being section one, and finally rubber cement in section six. All right, Sean, I've given you a picture of the ingredients that I used, and I've given you snapshots of each section. Now I'm looking forward to what's your opinion on what I provided you. Thanks, Garland. So Garland had contacted me on Facebook Messenger and said, hey, I've got this idea for an upcoming project. And the odd thing was I had a similar idea about doing the same thing. We wanted to find out which masking fluid worked better. And I thought, bah, I'll be able to tell which one's which. I'll be able to figure it out because, you know, I'm really good like that. I can figure out masking fluids and Garland said, uh, well, how about we do this? How about I do the test, I show you the pictures, and you try and guess which one is which. So that's the plan, and that's what we're going to do on Garland Tries to... Never mind. All right, so here are the different products that you used, and here's the panel with the different results. So I'm seeing six different things, and you're not telling me which is which. So let's see. Number one, I like the variation in colors, and I'm glad that you use the white as the base because look at that, I, I need to stop biting my cuticles. I, I'm glad you uh, use the white as the base because I have trouble with the white depending on the color of masking fluid that I use. Sometimes, like, I've used AIM toothpaste and it's tinted the white, but I don't see any tinting on this. I see you used salt. I like the variation in colors and how random it is, so one looks good. Two, it doesn't look like you did as much chipping, or maybe it didn't come off as well, but the end result looks pretty much the same. There might be a little bit of discoloration on number two. Up here, maybe. Let's see. Three. Ooh, I like this one a lot. I see that same variation. I see the chipping. I see no discoloration. Three looks good. Let's see, what about four? Four looks good. I don't see any color variation. The chipping looks good. It looks very random. Number five, I like this one. I like this one mainly because it's just got a lot to look at. Um, I see a lot of variation. This reminds me of my Mandalorian build. It has a lot of different colors showing through in different places, but this one looks good. And the last one, number six. Again, it all looks good. I, I could pick a favorite, but I, I really don't see a difference in any of these as far as the quality of the masking. They all look like they masked perfectly, allowing to have both colors show through depending on the layer that you were trying to chip. And other than, I believe it was number two, which might have some color variation, but only in the one that was up here, I believe it was this one, Maybe some color up here, but that could just be the masking fluid not being all the way off. But I don't know. I'm I'm not really seeing a lot of difference in them. And I really had absolutely no idea which was which. And I know Garland was a little disappointed because he wanted the results to be more different. But actually, 
The results of this are what I had hoped they would be because what this means is go for whatever's cheapest. I buy rubber cement, I buy really expensive. This stuff was $29 and I buy white toothpaste. This was 49 cents for this little tube and the results show that it doesn't matter what you use. Go for what's cheaper. It's just a masking fluid meant to hide the bottom layer and the results to me look almost identical. That's what I see, Garland. How about you? Thank you, Sean. Wow. Just wow. His breakdown of the sections was incredible. I can't believe he even spotted that I used salt. I didn't even tell him I was going to use it. Just shows the man is an expert. And his final conclusion is totally spot on. The fact that it really doesn't matter which masking agent you use, they all work. And that's kind of awesome. It gives you a lot of variety in which you can afford to use, what you want to use, and for what application one might be better suited than the other. Additionally, he spotted right away that in one of the sections there was a little bit of yellowing. And his conclusion was absolutely 100% correct. I wasn't able to wipe away all the masking and it left a little bit of a residue. Now, I know he said he liked them all, but it seemed like he paused a little bit to internalize three sections a little bit more than the others. And I think it's kind of for the same reason why I like those sections a little bit better than the other ones too. In those sections, I use both types of toothpaste and I use both types of latex. My guess is that I was more comfortable with using those products. And because of that, I was able to control and get the look that I wanted. And the fact that I was able to put enough of the compounds on, it was easier to pull off the masks when I was done. And I think that gave an overall better appearance than the other sections that I used. So here's my quick breakdown on each of the components. Now for the toothpaste, I really wasn't surprised by the results. I've used it several times before. I'm very comfortable with using it. And I really didn't think that there was any difference between the two types of toothpaste that I used. Now, the glue, I really wasn't all that pleased with the results. And I think it's because I was too timid in my application. It came out a little bit runnier and it just didn't lay down as thick, which resulted in a tumultuous amount of work to lift the mask after I was done painting. And I just didn't really think the effect grabbed my interest like the latex and the toothpaste. And it was the washable glue that left the residue, which Sean noticed right away. Now, when it comes to the liquid latex, I guess my biggest impression is yes, it is fun to peel back the layers when you're done, but more importantly, I think there's a few steps that I've never seen noted anywhere else. It was really runny and the brush I was using, it just didn't adhere to it so that when I tried to apply it, I just didn't have that control like I wanted. So my recommendation would use to use like an artistic painting brush. That way the bristles are much tighter packed and they'll hold the masking agent a little bit better. And when you get ready to pull it off at the end, I think maybe a clay tool or a dentist pick might be helpful to bring up the edges a little bit better. And then you can pull it, the rest of it off with your fingers. Now, I think the one that I was most surprised about was the mustard. I expected that there was going to be some residue afterward. I thought it was going to be oily. I expected that it would lay down similar to the toothpaste. But in reality, it laid down really thin. And I think because of that, I was a little bit shy in applying more. And when I tried to remove the mask later, it just didn't pull up. So I think in future uses of it, I just need to gob it on there. You know, make sure that it's stacked up vertically so that when all the painting's done, it's easy to just wipe off. And yeah, the rubber cement. I would say it's safe to say mistakes were made. So why do I say this? Because in the past week, I've seen several makers use this same exact product 
with great effect. Uh, me, not so much. From the viewpoint of a newer prop maker, what will I use going forward? Hands down, any type of toothpaste. And I really liked the latex more than I thought I would. At some points, I think I couldn't get past the price point, which is why I think the Creature latex is so much better. The bottle is huge for almost the same price and the application and removing it later is near identical. And I gotta give credit where credit is due. Ado Morin from Fabworks, he was the one who kind of brought this up to the community. So that's why I added it to my experiment. And it works just as good as the expensive stuff. And it's definitely gonna be in my arsenal moving forward. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode on weathering as much as I did. I really learned a lot. And I really wanna give a shout out to Sean. His expertise was, I, I can't even put a word to it. It was really enlightening. Uh, I really liked working with him. I learned a lot. And anyone, if you have not seen his channel, it's called Try to Finish Something. It's spectacular. He does near everything and he does it in great fashion. So I re highly recommend his channel. Now on a personal level, I just wanna say I'm really appreciative of the people who stay tuned to when I finish these videos and post them. It means a lot to me. And the people who say some nice things in the comments, it really encourages me to, to do more, to raise the bar in things that I've done before. So stay tuned and I hope to have something out real soon.